makes twist things. That's done in a room. Did you get any sleep last night? Sleep? What's that? Why don't I cook you some breakfast? I'm not hungry. An omelette, a mushroom omelette, your favourite? Ken, don't talk to me as if I'm simple. I'll eat when I'm ready. <coughs> oh, the stink in here! Tracy says the food in there's rotten. Breakfast the worst. God knows what they serve up. Yeah, well, it's you I'm more worried about at the moment. Look, let me make you some tea and toast, at least. Please, Deirdre. All right, love. Thank you. Oh, thank for God's sake, Mother, give it a rest. I can't be breathing in your fag smoke with my chest. Oh, calm down, Deirdre. You'll be having a nervous breakdown next. There was a woman at the one o'clock club whose son got his hand caught in an angle grinder. Is this you trying she... to help? I'm only saying... Look, come on. You suffered worse than this and got through it. <laughs> worse than this? When? When Susan died. When Susan died? You hadn't seen her for donkey's years. You were about as much used to her as a father as you were to Tracy. That's an evil thing to say. Oh, I'm sorry, Mother, I forgot. That's your job, isn't it? I'm going to work. Looked after. Blanche can manage. So perhaps going away together somewhere. You want us to go on a holiday? I'm not talking about two weeks in Mallorca. We could visit Peter and Adam, a, a caravan in the lakes, anywhere. Somewhere that gets us away from being constantly reminded about what's happened. I don't run away from my problems. Where are those fish cakes? What? I had two fish cakes under a saucer on the side. Look, for heaven's sake, can't you see we're trying to talk? Don't speak to her like that. Our marriage is crumbling beneath us and she's worrying about her fish cakes. I'll open a tin of soup later. Blanche. I'm going back to work. I thought it was your half day. It is. I'm not spending it here. Oh, yeah? What happened to not running away from your problems? Don't you get it? Over and over, you refused to get involved in what was going on over the road. Do you really think, do you really think that I could have stopped what happened? I don't know. I'll never know, will I? Because you never even tried. Deirdre! Look, we can't go on like that. Please, please, talk... If you go now, I won't be here when you get back! Oh, that's you in a nutshell, isn't it? All talk. Don't wait up. You keep making empty threats like that, she's going to walk all over you. I know my daughter. You have to stand up to her. Be a man, Kenneth. You have to make quite so much noise when you eat. They're crackers. Would you rather I swallowed them whole? Still here? I won't be here when you get home. That's a laugh. I'm surprised you haven't hoovered through for her. You're all gone and no dinner, you. Always have been. No wonder she treats you the way she does.
What are you doing? Taking your advice. Going. Going where? Doesn't matter, does it? I can't stay here. Not when things are like this. It's not doing any of us any good. But this is your home. Not anymore, it isn't. I only meant you to stand up to Deirdre. I was provoking you, that's all. I know. And I'm sorry I shouted at you earlier. I mean, this must be as hard for you as for any of us. It's a nightmare. My whole family just shattered. This is for the best, for all of us. Ken. Look after Deirdre for me. I'm extremely fond of you. You know that, don't you? What are you doing sitting in the dark? Where's Ken? Gone. You're drunk. No, I'm not. Gone? What do you mean, gone? What do you think I mean? Packed his case and gone. You needn't act so surprised. He said as much at dinner time. Right. I've had a guts full today, so I'm having an early night. That enough space for you? It's no good looking for him. We can't keep doing this, Mother. It's not right. I half expected having to tip him off the settee. But he's obviously found a better option. Well, not for long. He hasn't taken anything with him. And there's only so many meal times he can miss. Oh, I don't know. I think it's probably more my fault than his. Give over. You know what he's like. I could kill him myself sometimes, but I've given him so much stick this last few weeks. You don't just walk out. But then... Yes. All right, Mother. You do, if you think you're being pushed. It won't come to any harm. No, of course not. I'm just worried that the longer he stays away, the harder it'll be for him to talk himself into coming back. He'll be back with his tail between his legs before his evening news gets here. Just you watch. Well, if he does... Just try and be civil, will you? I'm always civil. Of course you are, Mother. What am I on about? Far be it from me to say I told you so. You couldn't help it just slipping out, though, could you? Are you back, then? Uh, I'm not stopping. I just need a few clothes. Good clothes? What for? Mum. Where have you been? I'm perfectly all right. Aye, on the outside. Well, you're here now, so... You might as well just stop where you are. No, we've been through all this. I'll get a few clothes for now, and uh, then I'll be off. Oh, um, if you're worried about anything or there's an emergency, that's where I'm staying. Not only is he pig-headed, he's proud of it. Principal Blanche, one of the very few standards I've got left. You can't stop in a B&B. &B. What have you been doing all day? Reading, thinking, not arguing. I'll only be a few minutes. You should be blasting him. Oh, mother, will you give it a rest? Oh. Ken, you, you don't need that. Stopping in a B&B &B is costing you money you haven't got for a start. Come and sit down, eh? Look, if me apologising makes a difference... Oh, come on, hang on Mother, now. will you just keep your oar out for a minute? What have I said now? I've pushed it to this, I know, and I'm sorry. No, no, you were right, Deirdre. 
We both need a bit of space away from one another for now. But we don't have to be in separate houses to give each other space. We both understand what it means. It's easier this way. Not for me, it isn't. There's no Tracy, no Adam, and now no you. How much space do I need? Stay, Ken. Let's not do this. You'll be begging him next. Well, if it works, I will. Try not to help, Blanche, all right? Oh, sort yourselves out, then. Oh. Come on, I know you're in there. I don't like her. Oh, that's a nice, cheery start. All right. If you're looking for Paul, we left hours ago. Is he not back yet? I told him you rang. Have you noticed that big, meaty fly in our house? Noticed it? It's ubiquitous. Well, I don't know about that. But it seems to be in every room I go in. Do you know who I think it is? Charlie. Oh, don't be so soft. No, it won't go away. It's taunting us. But you know who'd see it off, don't you? Kenneth. Oh, how has it come to this? He'd rather fling money at a B&B &B than sleep under his own roof. I don't think it's the roof he's got a quarrel with. You should have thought about this while you were baiting him. Well, so should you. I were trying to smooth things over. I'm the closest this street's got to a diplomat. Deirdre, do you need planning permission for a garden shed? Pardon? Council rules on planning permission. Do you need it for a garden shed? Well, how big is it? Well, I don't know. It's big. It's that lot next door. I want it down. What she said. Well, if you want to make an objection, you'll have to find out what the measurements are. Measuring? Right. Ashley, thanks. You could end up like that. Shall I tell you who it is, or do you recognise the voice? Sorry to disturb you again. Just need a few bits and pieces. Help yourself. Everything all right? Yes, fine, thank you. All right, I'll just step upstairs. And do you believe that? What? That about the bits and pieces he needs. Real reason is here, is in the hope that you will have a kind word for him. Well, he's wasting his time. At least our Tracy just hit her man over the head and had done with it. So, what are you two up to today? Not a lot. I thought you were babysitting. Oh, for Liz, yes, I am. And what are you up to? I'm calling on an old friend. Denise Osborne. I see. Denise? His hairdresser friend. Yes, yeah, she wrote a very nice letter of support to Tracy, which I showed you. And I wanted to say thank you, and that put us in touch again. How oh, very convenient. I saw it. Anyway, so I'm uh, going there for the day and meeting Daniel again, which I must admit I'm very much looking forward to. This is your son, Daniel, is it? The one you never talk about? Yes, it is. And the reason he never talks about him is because he hasn't been near him in years. And now that's going to change. Right, well, I'll be off. Bye. Bye. And it doesn't worry you? What doesn't? That he's taking up with an old flame, one that's got a ready-made family in tow. Well, I think the reason he told us about it is because he wants me to worry. Which is why you're not going to. I'm not, no. You could be pig-headed, Deirdre Hunters was sometimes. Do you know that? Well, I wonder where I get that from. Blanche, what are you doing here? Same as most folk. Looking for a taxi. Well, well you'll have to wait, because you've hardly got anyone on. Don't mind. I'd sooner sit here than in a house that's divided. Where are you going to? To the address on this letter. And who lives there? You may well ask. No, I didn't actually. 
Who lives there is my son-in-law's mistress and the child they had together, which some people might find shocking. But me? I'm hardened to it. You have to be in our house. And you're just paying them a visit? One they won't be expecting. You followed me? I found the address and took a taxi, if you want to call that following. Oh, well, can I ask why? Uh, look, shall I leave you two alone? Well, I really don't see why I should have to. This is your home. What is this, Blanche? Did Deirdre know you're here? And not unless she's got psychic powers, no. So you just took it into your head to follow me? Well, I'm still waiting to hear why. Uh, excuse me, everybody. Can I just introduce... Uh, this is Daniel, my son. Hello, Daniel. Dan, this is Ken, who I told you was coming. Hello. And uh, this lady here who's arrived unexpectedly is uh, Ken's mother-in-law, the mother of his wife. Much as he might like to forget he has one. Oh, please. Well, why don't you sit down now you're here? Uh, can I get you a drink? Oh, a brandy would be nice. Thank you. Oh, it's good to meet you again, Daniel. We were uh, about that big when I last saw you. Mum said. And you're secondary school now? High school, yeah. I used to be a teacher. Did your mother tell you? Yes, yeah, she did. <coughs> Blanche. This was never going to be easy, and your presence, quite frankly, is not helping. I wasn't meaning to help. So what is it you've come for? Come on. We're all waiting to hear. When I've had a drink... <sighs> Anybody else wants to... Hello, dear. First, so I could have a look at this lady for myself. Flattered. Hoping that I could get some notion of what she's playing at. I'm not playing at anything. Having a married man visiting, one that's fallen out with his wife and thinks that gives him the right to do whatever he pleases. My wife made it clear she doesn't want me anywhere near her. Doesn't want me in the house. And weren't you quick out of the door? Off like a shot. Daniel, you don't need to listen to this. Why don't you go to your room, eh? It's OK. I'm not sure that it is. Well, I don't see why any of us should listen to this. Look, I called round this morning and did I get so much as a civil word? No. She couldn't wait to get me out of the house again. Oh, you couldn't wait to go, you mean. And yes. All right. Deirdre hasn't been right nice towards you. But that doesn't give you the right to run off and go looking for some fancy piece from your past. Daniel, go to your room, please. I think you've said enough. When things go wrong in a marriage, you stick at it until they go right again. So if you're asking me why I've come, it's to remind you of the vows you took and of where you should be now, which is at home with your wife, not this den of iniquity. So it's, not it's time you were going. No need to get physical. And I'll let all that stuff about den of iniquity pass, mainly because you're too old to slap. Ah, so this is the sort you choose to associate with. No, we don't need this. No. All right, then. I don't think that whatever needs to be discussed between you two should be done in my flat, to be honest. I assure you, it wouldn't have been my choice either. Blanche, you've said your piece. I've hardly got going. Uh, look, I'm sorry, but either you both go or you save it for another time. Daniel is not being put through this. I'm sorry, Ken. No, 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 no. Blanche is leaving, aren't you? I am here to see Daniel. Anything else can wait. You should be thinking about Deirdre. It's the mistakes you're making now that want sorting out, not the ones you made years oh, back. Right, that's it. You're keeping your taxi waiting. I can find my own way out, thank you. You think on, lad. We'll discuss this matter at a later date. I don't know why I interfere. I do. It's what keeps you going. Where have you been, anyway? Her flat. Ken's fancy piece. You what? 
fobbed me off like he always does. Says that he's only there seeing Daniel. There's nothing going on and would I mind minding me own business. Why didn't you tell me what you were doing? Because you'd never have let me pass the front door making excuses for him. Still, at least there were no outward signs of affection. Well, I should hope not yet. I can't believe you followed him. No? Well, somebody has to. They've consorted once, and they'll be consorting again if you don't get a grip, lady. I'm to Denise's flat, and I've seen the two of them together. Stop it, Mother. I will, if you listen to what I have to say. I don't want to hear another word. I've shown willing. But if you do nothing, they'll carry on sizing each other up and the whole thing will happen over again. Now, go and knock some sense into him. <laughs> well, that's easier said than done. You're not doing work till 11. That gives you three hours. Look, I don't relish the thought of talking to Ken in some B&B &B with a load of commercial travellers shoving their breakfast down their throats. Commercial travellers went to the wall years ago. Same as bread poultices. Think of a better excuse. He prefers to talk to Denise. He doesn't. It's the lad he's interested in. And why shouldn't he be? Well, I... I don't begrudge him his son. Good. He can have his son and you can have your marriage. Don't let it slip away. That's what'll happen, unless you rouse yourself. It was Ken who walked out. Yes. But where is he at this very minute? Sitting in some lonely room with strangers around him. Mom! You've got to find out where he was. Well, he wasn't walking the streets all night, was he? He could have gone to see a friend. Oh, yes, he did. Her name's Denise. Look, don't jump to conclusions. He could have been run over by a bus. Oh, yeah. And he might have been hit by a meteorite, but the odds are against it. If you're going to be sarcastic... Oh, what do you expect? I go traipsing round there, hoping for a, a reconciliation, and what do I get? A conversation with his landlady. It proves nothing. Oh, come on. You don't honestly believe he didn't spend the night with her? No, I think he did. But I could be wrong. I doubt it. Right, so get round there and find out for certain. Oh, not now. I'm going to work. Ken, is that you? Sure, I have not. That's a daft question. It's your house. Am I welcome? Yes. Deirdre? She's been out looking for you today. Yeah, my landlady told me. She told me a couple of things as well. Like what I spent last night? No. But Deirdre made an intelligent guess. Don't tell me I got it wrong. Well, from the look on your face, I surmise that you did, in part. So now you're going to put me right? I hope so. I doubt it. Hiya. Right. So, why did you go and see her? She's the mother of my child. And I'm not. I could have been, but you never wanted a son with me. It's not as if you didn't have the chance. Tracy's our daughter. Don't you mention her name in the same breath as Denise. Look, I went to pieces, Deirdre. I had to do something. Rekindle an old flame. See my son, try to put things right. Well, you could have written to him, you could have rung. And what about the internet? Kids are always on it these days. I'm not a kid. Did you read Shakespeare to him? See if he'd inherited your tastes. Tried to start a relationship. Late enough, but what else is there in my life? What about me? Well, you drove me out of here. You left of your own free will. I was a stranger in my own home. Oh, well, you must have been delighted to be welcomed into hers. Are you still arguing about Denise? He did stay the night with her. What did I tell you? I knew he would. He was bound to. I went to see Daniel. I slept on the sofa. I'll bet. Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> Picasso, eat your heart out. Hey, are you all right? Um, have you got time for a coffee? Yeah, why not? 
They'll manage without me. Come on. Come on, then. Amy, you I have lunch. How are you? Oh, oh if I were the sort to complain... You'll never guess what Ken's been up to. Up to? At his age, most men are playing bowls and fretting about their prostates, not out tomcatting. Ken, are you kidding? <laughs> Do you remember Denise Osborne? Ah, the hairdresser. Says it all. Men stealing trollops, the lot of them. He's only living with her. Since when? Since he walked out on me. Apparently, he wanted to get back in touch with Daniel. You know, the kid they had together. We know exactly what he wanted to get back in touch with. You should see her. Blousy, brassy. She wrote to him, sympathising about our Tracy. I mean, the nerve. Using something like that as an excuse to get her claws back into him again. And Ken fell for it. He's a man. Of course, he's tried to tell me there's nothing going on. So what are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to confront her. Find out what the house she thinks she's playing at. Oh, you'll get no change out of that one. The way he was with you last night, I'll guarantee she'd been winding him up. You know, Blanche could have a point. You might only make things worse. <gasps> worse than what? This is not just a bit on the side we're talking about. I'm beginning to... Any uh, news from the council when they'll finish your flat, Dorian? I mean, you must be wanting to get back in your own bed. I know I would. Well, yes, I rang them yesterday trying to get a date. Yeah. Uh, I'll just say one word. Asbestos. What about it? Well, it's all over the block. It's shocking to get rid of, you know. Oh. So you'll uh, be with us for a little while, then? Well, don't sound so disappointed. No, 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 I'm not, and I'm sure uh, Rita will be glad of the company. Rita? Rita? Eh? Well, you, you look like you've seen a ghost. Uh, no, uh... Is it that, that woman with Ken going into number one? Come on, last to the bar. Buys the drinks. Hey Come on. <laughs> oh, you're back sooner than I... I take it you're not home for good, bringing your floozy with you. I've come to see Deirdre Blanche, and Denise is not my floozy. What do you prefer? Home wrecker, Scarlet Woman? Please, I really don't need this. Truth hurts, doesn't it? Where's Deirdre Blanche? Drowning her sorrows. And she's certainly got plenty to drown. Good riddance to bad rubbish. Hey, I love this. Uh, that, that, uh, that woman, she was with Ken, wasn't she? Do you know, my eyes aren't what they used to be, and in this light... <laughs> He's been keeping a very low profile. And mind you, I'd do the same if I'd been harbouring a murderer. But he thought she was innocent, didn't he? Oh, she never fooled me. <laughs> Just pay for the drinks, Norris. Here we are, Norris. <laughs> oh! <sighs> All oh, the flaming cheek. Don't start, Deirdre, please. Well, what do you want me to do, Ken? Buy the pair of you a drink? Can we just sit down and talk? No, we can't. How humiliating do you think this is? Parading your tart in front of our friends and neighbours. Deirdre, please. Look, all we wanted was a sensible chat, and you start screaming like a scraggy-faced fishwife. No wonder Ken walked out on you and that old witch of a mother of yours. Don't you dare talk about a defenceless old lady like that. Blanche, Ken only defenceless. came to me because you and her drove him out. Look, can we please not do this in here? That is between him and me. It has nothing to do with you, lady. And I use the term loosely. <laughs> Do not speak to me like that. Oh, well, you should be used to it. You're nothing but a pathetic slapper, <laughs> luring other people's husbands into your bed. First chance you get. It worked once, so you thought you'd try the same trick again. Your daughter killed somebody in cold blood, and then you started blaming Ken because he didn't realise what she was up to when you didn't have a clue. Uh, oh, Deirdre, for heaven's sake! First he had his coming just Come because on, he's in yeah. your bed. Doesn't mean to say you can come round here shooting your mouth no, off. Deirdre! Deirdre, for the last time, there is nothing going on between me and Denise. She's done her best to help, and you lay into her like some sort of deranged harpy. 
Now, why did I expect you to believe that? Because you never listen to anything you don't want to hear. Well, I'm not going to waste my breath talking to you anymore. Come on, Denise, let's get out of here. I bet Denise is loving all this. Of course she is. You played right into her hands. I was determined I wasn't going to sink to her level. I just flipped. I, I couldn't help myself. Well, she tips up in Rovers with Kennington. Hey, I'd have swung for her myself. Would you? With a bit of luck, her cheek will still be stinging from that slap. Ken will be standing by with a bit of TLC. Oh. You're going to give dear. I must say, I thought Ken would have turned up by now. I've done the roast potatoes extra crispy in his honour. Not that he deserves them. She looks like one of the lentil brigade to me. He'll be throwing his money at that kiddie left, right and centre. Flashing trainers, cyber pets, computer games. You name it, Kenneth will be paying for it. She might come in for the odd bauble or two and all. Let's just hope he starts on about global warming. He'll be out that door before you can say carbon emissions. Oh, thank the Lord. I knew you'd be back. Don't let me disturb you. Oh, give over. Why would I want to watch the Jeremy Kyle show? I've been living it this year. So long as I've kept you amused. Far from it. I'm just glad this nonsense is done with. Not staying, Blanche. I've just popped back to collect a few more things. What? No. No, wait. Deirdre will be back for a dinner in a couple of hours. I'd best get a move on, then. Oh, for pity's sake, this has gone far enough. If you knew how much she was missing you. <laughs> You've got a very odd way of showing it. You should be careful on that high horse, Ken. It's a long way down. But can't you see, you're only going to be hurting yourselves with your daft pride, the pair of you. Deirdre wants you back. And you want to come deep down. Stay... There's no point. There's no point. And I can't even consider coming back until Deirdre calms down. And the way she was the other night, that mightn't be for a very long time. Excuse me. All right, well, I won't deny that you need to get a job. I thought you were a reasonable man. At least stop and talk to her. Didn't come back for a row. My address and contact number are on that. Moved in with her full time, have you? It's only temporary. I'm on Denise's couch, I told you. Aye, for now. Happen she'll have you under her continental quilt before too long. 